Hi everyone, it's Karen here. Welcome, welcome to another Monday video with me and Lavinia Stamps. Today I'm going to share with you how I make these baubles. I think I made my first bauble like this about six years ago and they're made with two parts and I just put different types of snow into the baubles. They're so popular, I've done them at many of my workshops and as I say, they are so popular that I thought I'd share with you again how I created them. So I've used here Zen Butterfly, lots of snow, glitter, mistletoe, stargazing set, some of the fairies from Fairy Foragers here, the gorgeous Rue and Raven fairies, and here this one slightly bigger. I put different types of ribbons, beads, different bows onto each one. Some of them I've put stickers around the edge and the others I've glued. Opportunities are endless, different shapes, different sizes to suit whatever you want. So the bauble that I'm going to be showing you in detail today is this one. We've got the gorgeous little Rory and Darcy, got Winterberry and Stars 2 Mini. So the colours that I'm going to be using, tumbled glass, peacock feathers, salty ocean, chipped sapphire around the edge. And for my stamping, I'm going to use Versafine Clear Nocturne and Warm Breeze. I'm going to start with a piece of 300 GSM card. And here is my bauble. So as I said, they come in two parts. I keep my fingers away from the centre of the bauble because otherwise the static any oil from my fingers gets transferred to the centre of the bauble and the snow sticks to it. So I'm quite happy touching the outside, but the inside, I try to keep my fingers away. So you're going to turn your bauble upside down and with a pencil. If you've got a die the same shape as your bauble, fabulous, then you can use that. But when you've got heart shaped bauble, it's not so easy. So just using a simple pencil, created a line, and now I'm cutting around the edge. As you can see, I'm cutting slightly inside the circle. And that's because there's a rim around the edge of the baubles. And you want this piece of card to sit into the rim. So just, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can see. I've got a rim on the inside of that bauble and you just want your circle to pop inside. Now that's slightly too big still. So I'm just going to snip a bit off around the edge. Not particularly uniform, but that's okay. So there we go. In its slots, still a tiny bit on that side. Fabulous. Now, if you look at some of my past baubles, they're double sided, meaning that I've used a different image on each side. You can do the same image or make them different. On some of them, I've used one piece of card for both sides, and it depends how tidy you are, whether you get any ink splatters on it, as to whether you want to use the same card or whether you double it over. Entirely up to you. I'm just going to pop, you'll see what I mean in a second. So we're going to start with tumbled glass. You don't have to use all these different colours, but I quite like it because it gives me a glow around the baubles. I'm going to use this as my blending sponge. And I'm going to bring this light tumbled glass into the centre of my cardboard cutout. That's all. The reason I'm using a lighter colour is because I just want the centre to be light filled. And now 
I'm going to use peacock feathers around the edge. I'm using Distress Oxides, they blend really well. I'm just using this piece of copy paper so that my fingers don't get onto the card. You're trying to use or trying to avoid touching the card as much as possible because as I say that creates an opportunity for the snow to stick. We don't need that. So you can use whatever colours you like if you wanted reds, pinks, purples, you just want a slight variation in the colours. I've got a bit of a scratch mark there so I'm just going to smooth it out by pressing a bit harder down the edge. Perfect. Then I'm going to take one of my favourite stencils of all time. This is Featherleaf. I'm going to pop it over here and I'm going to take my Salty Ocean. Again, just want a contrast. And I'm going to come around the bottom edge. Gently. Just to create a bit of extra interest and depth in my design. That's all for Salty Ocean. And now to my stamping, my Nocturne, this lovely berry wreath. And I'm gonna hang this berry down so that Rory and Darcy are pointing at the really interesting berries in the center of that card. And then I'm going to ink these cute little two up. And because they are solid silhouette stamps, I'm just going to make sure that I'm tapping, tapping quite a lot. Now, the only thing you want to remember is that whatever images you stamp, you don't want them too close to the bottom because that's where your snow is going to sit. So I've set one higher than the other, just creates a bit of extra interest there. Taking Warm Breeze and my Star 2 mini set. And I'm just going to pop a few of these around the centre. Some of these stars must go off the edge so it doesn't look too contrived. And then I'm moving the stamp around. There we have it. Now I'm going to give that a blast with a heat gun before we go around the edge. I'm going around the edge with chipped sapphire. Then I'm going to take my Uniball Signal white pen, you can use a Posca pen, and I'm just going to colour in some of these berries. You could use liquid pearls or enamels, glossy accents, any of those. I prefer to use this pen because again, otherwise the snow tends to stick on top of the berries. This way I can just use the white pen, dry it off, and you'll see the snow will have enough texture on its own. And then a few little dots. And you can see how the white pen is showing up more at the darker background. These little dots just adding a bit of magic to our whole design. 
voila. I'm gonna give that a blast with a heat gun first, make sure it's completely dry. So we want that completely dry before we put it into our bauble with the snow. I've done a second one, which is exactly the same with a separate piece of card because I'm going to put them back to back in my bauble. Sometimes it's a bit hard as you're working not to smudge it or get some on the background. So that's why I've done two. The type of snow that I'm using. I use two types of snow. One is this called Iced Diamond, which is really is in this bauble and it's sort of glittery. And then the other one is this, which is a bit flakier. But it's whatever you prefer. So for this one, I'm going to take a tiny bit of my ice diamond and I'm just going to pop it into the inside of my bauble, pop my first design down, making sure that I've got it right side up. Bear in mind, oops, as I tip half of my snow out, bear in mind this is where it's going to be hung and I think that's a good amount. Then I'm going to pop the second card on top of it and again put some snow into it and then take my top of my bauble ah, before I do that as I said in the beginning you can do it one of two ways either put a bit of a stick around the edge or a tiny bit of glue this glue dries clear so a tiny bit of glue at different intervals in your bauble. That will hold the whole thing together. And then they snap into place like that. And there you have your little bauble. And they so cute. So I'm just going to show you how I tied the ribbons on most of these. Obviously, you can do it in any which way you like. Each of my ribbons is about 30 centimetres long. I like to use a bit of sheer ribbon and a contrasting colour. So I always cut the ribbon at an angle so that you've got a point and you can just feed it through the hole. I hold the bauble facing me. That way I can stabilize it, secure it with a single knot, and make sure these are tied upwards. Naturally, if you wanted to tie this so it hung on your tree, then you would tie a bow or a knot at the top there. Then I like to do this bow again with the bauble flat down and facing you. Holding these two up with my fingers, tie it that way. And then again, the trick is to keep this bauble flat. That's why I like using these half round flat locket style baubles. And there you have your little bow, neat and tidy. a bit of fluffing around here to tie it. And then I always put an angle here on each end of the ribbon. So there you have it. As I said, if you wanted to hang it, we'd just tie a little bow at the top here and that would hang nicely on your tree or wherever you're gonna hang it, your door handle, what have you. I hope you've enjoyed that. I'd love to see what you make. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.